In this video, you're going to be shown how to take basic shapes and turn them into a human male head. You'll be shown how to make eyes, how to form the features of the face. You will be shown how to use curves to make things like eyelashes as well as stylized hair. Uh, as you work through this tutorial and watch the tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. So thanks for taking a look at this tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I'm going to show you how to make a human male head in Blender 3.6. So let's get started. Okay, what you're going to what you're going to want to do is go to Edit Preferences, look to where you see Add On, go the way over to the left, right. Make sure you put a check mark next to 3D View uh, colon 3D Navigation. We'll scroll down. Put a check mark next to Mesh Edit Mesh Tools, Mesh F2, Mesh Loop Tools as well. Okay, so let's bring in some reference. I'm gonna bring in, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a basic draw and I'm gonna put it on the screen so you can take a screenshot of it. That way you can have the, uh, the draw. And before we do that, what we're gonna do is press the N key. When we press the N key, uh, we have this menu pop up. What you want to do is go to view. You'll be able to see this if you went to that add-on and put in that put a check mark next to that top add-on. You're gonna go down to 3D navig navigation. This is what I typically use to navigate around Blender. This isn't how you have to move around. If you actually uh, left click and drag here, you can rotate your mouse. If you left click and push up or down on this plus symbol, you can zoom in and out. If you left click and drag on this hand, you can pan in and out. If you click here, you can go right to the camera. That is very useful. I tend to like this 3D navigation here, which like I said, you'll see this as long as you put that, a check mark next to the top selection for add-ons in Blender. I'm gonna see if I can make this tutorial not be super long. However, I am gonna to try to say as much as I'm, I'm doing uh, Somebody was saying they 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 wanted a basic explanation of everything going on. I think I kind of do that anyway, but I'll try to be more conscious about it now. So, anyway, what you want to do is go to front to go to front view, right? Be careful where this uh, 3D cursor is at. The 3D cursor affects a lot of things. When I first started off Blender, I wasn't aware of how much uh, in Blender was affected by the 3D cursor. Hey, one of the, the most important things that this 3D cursor does is this where the 3D cursor is at is where objects tend to come into Blender at. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our reference by holding shift and then pressing A, right? That brings up our, that's how you typically add things in. There's other ways to add things into Blender. This is typically how I do it. You're going to go down to image. You have these three different things that you can uh, work with. We're going to go to reference. So I'll left click this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for where my reference is at. which is this right here. So with this selected, uh, just how things are default, we'll select load reference. Okay, what I'm gonna do is bring in the reference image. I'm gonna leave it on the screen for five seconds. So you can take a screenshot of it. You can save that screenshot, then you'll be able to use that to work your way through this tutorial. So here is the picture. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have the reference, right? Do you notice how the cube is blocking out the reference, Im reference image? So what you wanna do is click on this reference image, right? This right here is the outliner. This is where Blender shows you what is inside of Blender. Uh, so with this selected, when you look down, you'll see a thing that uh, looks like a little square with a triangle and a circle in it. This is your data. Uh, menu so you'll click this and you have all these options for this image here so what you want to do is you're going to select for depth front for the orthographic that's what you see here this is good for the perspective when I go when I hold the middle mouse button see I can still see this I don't want that to be like that I want to when I go to rotate this disappears so I can see what I'm working on so when we unclick perspective now 
that goes away because we're in a perspective view. If you're curious about what kind of view you're in, if you look to your upper left, you can see this says user perspective, right? I'm about to click front. When I click front, you're going to see the image reappear again. Why did it reappear? Because when we look and see orthographic here with a check mark, we're also in orthographic mode there. Okay, so we can see our image. Notice we can't see the cube. The reason why we can't see the cube is because we have this set for front here. The opacity is 1, which equals, uh, let me click this. So, so basically it means that this is fully visible. So what, when you put a check mark, check mark next to opacity, when you lower this down, now you can see both your, your uh, reference image as well as your cube. Okay, so let's set up this reference image so we can work. So I'm rolling the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to click the move tool, right? Actually, I don't, I don't want the, okay, yeah, I'm on the empty, which is the picture, right? So what I'm going to do is we're using this cube. We're going to replace this cube with a, a UV uh, sphere, by the way, but we can use this. So basically what you want for this cube, my particular way of doing things, um, uh, what I try to do is I try to have the, the head and then the the top of the head go down basically to the around the uh, the nose. Like I said, we're going to replace this with a UV sphere. However, it would probably be around the same size, right? So notice that the top of the cube is near the head. The bottom of the cube is near the nose. That's not exact, but that's fine. So this is the front reference, right? So I'm holding shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. I'm letting go. I still could I could do this, and this will let me pan as well. Uh, I really do like these buttons. I almost never hear anyone talk about these buttons. These buttons let you work with one hand and a mouse, which is very, very nice. Uh, I'll switch back and forth. Anyway, so we have the, the front reference, right? The reason why you want to set up your front reference first is because you did this work here, right? So now what we want to do is go to our right view, right? So what we're going to do is see this line. We still have that empty selected, right? We're going to hold shift and press D. That's how you duplicate things in Blender. Typically, I'll duplicate. I'll move my mouse, right? See how this is the image is stuck to my mouse. Now I'll right click. And the reason why I move the mouse is so I know that the I have a duplicate. When I right click, whatever I duplicate jump, jumps right back into place, right? So I'm going to press R to rotate on the Z axis 90. And then I'm going to press uh, enter, right? So now we have our view set up for you know the right view so what we want to do is adjust things so things oops don't do not want the cube i'm not sure if i moved it or not uh, i want this empty one selected right so what i'm going to do is push this forward I, you don't want to move this up and down up or down you want to just push this forward push it forward to about where this line is going right about here is about where you want it right so when i go to front Pay attention, like see this, this sometimes this is a strike. You see how this is highlighted? Pay attention to where the 3D cursor is at. The 3D cursor is dead center. That's good. We go to right view, pay attention to the 3D cursor. It's pretty much the center of the head here. So it is how we we uh want it to be. Okay, as far as this reference image, we don't need to touch this, we just need to use it. Now that it's set up, we really don't need to touch this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this, we're gonna be you able know, quote unquote touch it right now then we're going to look to over to our upper right see this thing looks kind of like a, a I want to see a it looks like a funnel there you go so I'm going to click the arrow here right we have all these settings right here we want to do is go to this arrow when we click this arrow here that allows us to make things unselectable so see the empty here now we see this arrow when I click the arrow here click the arrow here these two images we can't select them now even if we want however we want to get them back we can just go over here Turn the arrows back on. Okay, so I'm gonna hold shift as well as the middle mouse button. I could have went to here, but I'm gonna select a cube. I'm gonna press X to delete that, right? I'm gonna bring in a UV sphere uh, for what we're gonna do. So remember, the 3D objects come in where the 3D cursor is at, right? So we're gonna hold shift, press A. We're gonna bring in, go to mesh, and we're gonna bring in a UV sphere. So there's the UV sphere there. Okay, with this UV sphere, we're going to right click this open con object context menu pops up. We're going to select shade smooth, right? 
Now what we want to do is, this is going to be the top of the head. We're going to use a duplicate of this to form around the jaw. Okay, so we're going to press, press and hold shift, then press D. We have a duplicate. We'll right click so everything stays in place. With the duplicate selected, which it's the, the last object that you have selected is highlighted. If you look to the outliner here, you can see here's the sphere.001 showing that's, that's a duplicate. What you want to do is you're going to push this down, right? Pay attention to that line. You see how when, I'm, I, when I move the uh, second sphere, there's a line right here. You want that line to go right through the eyes of your reference. Okay, before we move on, let's make it easier for us to work. And see how this is the same color, right? What we're going to do is go to the upper right. These are the viewing nodes in Blender, right? You're going to go to this arrow. You're going to click here. You're going to go down to random. And what that does is this randomizes objects in Blender. I find it makes it much easier when you are working with multiple objects in Blender to have the random option turned on. Okay, with that done, we're gonna go to our right view, right? Currently, we're in object mode. When you work in Blender, you tend to work in object mode, edit mode, scope mode, right? We're currently in object mode. What we wanna do now is we're going to go to scope mode. So now we're in scope mode, the tools change. These are all of the different tools uh, or the, most of the tools that you use in Blender, right? So I'm gonna hover here over this line, left click and drag this out. I like this because this, tends to make things faster. I recommend when you're working, uh, doing some kind of digital art, you have a plan for what you're doing. My thing, I tend to think like, as far as making decisions, I'm like, what will allow me to go faster? I know my tutorials tend to be long, if you're used to me. However, I am trying to think as, of things being faster. Uh, anyway, uh, the way you set things up, I'm, I'm explaining to you like why I dragged this out this side. Anyway, see this right here? Let's We wanna cut this out to match up with the jaw here and then We'll drag this forward once this is cut, then we'll cut this part of the jaw. So let's do that now. So this, when I say cut, right, this box trim, this is very useful because this actually doesn't cut the geometry. However, it gives the appearance of cutting. It actually flattens the geometry out. It makes things much easier as far as working and sculpting compared to actually cutting. So we're going to select this. We're going right to the edge of the jaw around that area. We're going to drag down, let go. And then what Blender did is it flattened out this area here. So if I hold them in the mouse button, you can see that flat area. It's very nice. Okay, with that done, we're going to go to the elastic brush. One of my favorite tools in Blender. Again, I don't see people use this much. I like this tool because this tool, long story short, that the elastic brush allows you to move things without having things get crazy is, is how I think of it, right? So anyway... We picked the elastic brush because all we want to do is we want to pull from here to here, all right? And just look at it, get it done. The elastic brush will do that. Typically, I see the grab brush used, and the grab brush is excellent. However, the grab brush seems like things can get out of control pretty quickly. So anyway, we're going to left click and drag down to here like this, all right? So now that we do that, did that, we have this right here. So what we're going to do is go back to this box trim. We're going to left click and hold, go to lasso trim, right? I'm putting a, the uh, center here where you can see that cross in the center there. We're about to drag down and then go like that. All right, get ready. So here we go. Then when we look, we can see that's pretty flat. That's excellent. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button and go towards the front. Notice we don't see our reference. So why don't we see the reference? See, it says user preference. We go back to front, front where the graphic makes the reference come back. Uh, okay, so you see this right here. Okay, so basically what is going on here is when you come into scope mode, this right here, this X, Y, and Z, X basically makes what you do on one side happen to the other side, right? So I didn't do that, right? So because I didn't do that, we have this. However, there's a pretty easy fix in Blender so what we can do is I'm going to click this arrow here, go down to Symmetricize, and now we have uh, Blender basically took one side and make it like make it made it <laughs> made it like the other side, right? Uh, if you use this Symmetricize, this plus this minus two X is important. 
because I'm pretty sure minus X is here, and then that copies to there. If you wanted to do the opposite, then you would want to go to uh, plus minus, plus it would be plus X to minus X on this side. Okay, this next thing I learned from, there's a, a YouTube guy, he's been around for a while now, ridiculously good uh, character modeler, uh, speed, char speed character, I guess is what his channel is, it, it looks like speed char or speed C-H-A-R, anyway, I learned this from him, so we're in here, right, we're in this object, in Blender, we're like, we're inside of this object, which means we don't, we're currently not set to work with this object, however, what you can do is take your mouse over here. I'm going to hold Alt and then press Q. See that flash? Now, just put that flash. Now we're in this object. So now we can work here, which is very, very nice. So what we're going to do is go back to this lasso trim, right? Before we do that, we don't have this. Basically, it's like a mirror turned on here. We're going to select that X. We're going to change this back to the box trim right here not too far in all right not too far in you want it like right here we want to slice this right just the edge okay so i'm going like this and now i slice that edge so that's flat all right okay we'll go back to a, a front view i'm gonna hover here hold alt press q there's the flash i'm gonna make sure i turn on the x uh, for this as well. Okay, let's add in some more objects. We're going to go to our upper left. We're in scope mode. We're going to left click. We're going to go to object mode, right? Here's our 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is important because where the 3D cursor is at is where objects are going to come in the Blender at. We're going to hold shift, press A, go to mesh, select cube, right? This is going to be our neck. I'm pressing S and then Z. That lets me scale along the Z axis, right? When I one of the nice things in Blender is you have like these preview lines when you do things uh, that you'll see come out. So anyway, with this neck, we scaled this down, right? We're currently in object mode. Now, before we went to edit, we went to sculpt mode. For this, we're going to go to edit mode. So we're going to go to upper left, and then we're going to select edit mode, right? So here we are in edit mode. In edit mode, you work with vertices, edges, as well as faces. It's important on what you're selected on. Currently, we're selected on the vertex select. I'm going to hold Control R. All right. If you press Control R, you might not see that line pop up. You might have to move your mouse. So just remember that you might have. If you're new to Blender, you might have to move your mouse. I didn't click anything other than Control R, and that's important because I didn't click anything. I can roll my mouse now, and I have these four. Those are called loop cuts. So I'm going to left click once, and then left click a second time to lock those loop cuts in. Okay, the reason why I put these loop cuts in is I want to make this look somewhat circular, like a neck. But if I didn't put these basically support lines in, uh, this would look, it wouldn't look like a, a cylinder, all right? And I like the geometry. It's easy to bring a cube in, stretch it out. It's quick. And I like how the geometry kind of goes from what we're about to do. So it doesn't look like a neck now, right? We go back to the upper left. We go to object mode. We go to, looks like a wrench. This is where your modifiers are at. If you're new to Blender in uh, your modifiers, we're going to get one of the main, you can use all the modifiers in Blender. There's particularly for sculptor, sculpting, there's some that you use a lot, which are subdivision surface, solidify, multi-resolution. Uh, those are, those are the uh, uh, smooth. So right now we're going to add a, a subdivision surface, right? So what this modifier does is it basically adds in geometry, right? When you look to your right, you can see here are the settings for multi-resolution. See this levels viewport? We're going to click this to increase the geometry, right? Now we're going to right click, select shade smooth. We're going to push this down, right? We're going to go to right view, drag this back, press R to rotate. When I press R to rotate here, because we're in orthographic mode, I, I don't need to be concerned about an axis. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hopefully you'll come to understand this later on. But when you're in orthographic view, you will rotate basically like what you see. Like when I press R, that's why I'm able to rotate. You might be like, why is he, if you're, not, if you're new to Blender, why is he explaining that? 
explaining it because I'm trying to be nice and help you <laughs> if, if you're new. If you're not new, you're probably like, what, what's going on? Somebody asked me, they were like, you know, can you go back to like basics? So I'm trying to be conscious and explain it even more. Anyway, I'm going to press S to scale, right? I'm looking at the neck. I'm going to move this inside the head. Notice that I don't have this going uh, just to here, right? I have it actually going inside of here as well as here. That's important. Remember that, right? I'm going to hold the no mouse button to rotate. I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect. Why don't we see the uh, the reference user perspective? What's going to happen when I click front? Reference will, will pop up because we'll be back in North Graphic mode. There we go. All right, so remember, the, the what's important about the, there's a lot of important things about the 3D cursor. However, one of the most important things is, is where the 3D cursor is at, is where objects tend to come in the Blender at. So we're going to hold Shift, press A. We're bringing in a cube to make some ears. We're going to move this cube over, right? We're going to shrink this cube down some. We're going to go to our, looks like our wrench. Remember I told you subdivision surface, use a lot. We're going to use it now. We're going to take this up to two. We're going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate. Remember I was telling you about the axes, right? What we're going to do here is we're going to press S to scale on the Y axis. See that line going out? That line is showing us how we're going to scale. If you're learning to, if you're learning new to, to Blender or 3D in general, by keeping control of your axes and where you're scaling on X, Y, or Z, you'll have a lot more control. So currently we're scaling on the Y axis. So I'm moving my mouse to flatten this out and flatten this out because I want this to look somewhat like an ear, or I want it to look like an ear. So I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis, right? So now I'm going to go to the reference. I'm going to move this in. I'm going to right click to smooth this out. So that's our object contents me context menu, right? I'll press S to scale, push this in. Be aware that uh, this is a, this orthographic mode, right? Uh, orthographics don't look exactly how things look in 3D, if that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense as we go through this. Don't get too, you know, wild with the ear, like trying to make it perfect in 2D. Uh, as a matter of fact, see this focal length right here? This focal length is basically like how you view things. I tend to like to have this on uh, the uh, set of 50B on 90, which gives you more a more better view. It's kind of hard to describe. I recommend you put it on 90. Let's leave it at that for now. Uh, so we want to have this ear be on the other side, right? So one of the ways we can do that is we'll click. We already have this modifier, right? Subdivision, so that's where we're getting this uh, roundedness. So what we're going to do is click Add Modifier, and this is another modifier you use a lot. In scope mode, we were using a mirror options, right? This is actually a modifier that mirrors. So we're going to select Mirror, right? Nothing happened. When we look at Mirror Object, we're going to click this eyedropper, select the neck, the reason why we selected the neck is the neck is right in the center. And because we selected this neck, Blender is mirroring this ear based on the neck to the other side. Okay, typically I like to put ears on as well as a neck. Helps me to work better. Something else we can do to help ourselves work better is we can make another window, right? So if you go to here, and this is a little strange, when I'm... This is important, all right, as far as making another window. So here's my mouse, right? It looks like a mouse. It's a pointer. It looks like a mouse over here. Watch as I cross the line. See that line? Oh, it's like double. That line means if I drag to here, this will get bigger. If I drag the other way, this will get bigger, right? I want to split this window. So there's the arrow, the arrow, this, and then there's this. When I go right up the center, this little small thing, see that? It's like a cross now. So I'm going to left click and, oops. I'm going to right click to get out of this. It's not doing what I want. What? There we go. That was interesting. There's multiple ways to drag this. Uh, the new ways, I remember learning them. And even though that's kind of strange, it seems to be the easiest way to do it. Anyway, I'm going to press the, what, okay, this is important. When you're in, a lot of important stuff, right? When you're in Blender, Depending on which window you're in, so I'm hovered over here, so I'll affect the things in this window. When I'm hovered over here, I'll, I'll affect the things in this window. So over here, I'll press the N key to take away this, right? I don't want to see the reference here. I want to use this window specifically to see things in a different view, all right? So uh, 
here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click these two circles here. So now we see just this here. So we can zoom in here. And what we can do here is we can, you know, position this. And notice how we can maneuver this. However, this over here is not affected by what we do there, which is uh, very nice. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to select this. Actually, before we do that, we'll go to scope mode. And we have this X. This is important that you have this on. What I want to do is see how the cheek is like sticking out a decent amount. I'm going to grab that, pull that in like that. We can see we still have this here going through the eyes. That's what we want, right? What we're going to do now is go to object mode, right? Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to hold shift select here, right? Holding shift allows you to select more than one object at a time. We're going to let go of shift, right? I'm going to hold control, then press J. What just happened is I just joined these two objects together, right? So now what we're going to go do is go from object mode to scope mode. Okay, see how we have these two colors here? This is Blender doing automatic things called face sets. Face sets are very useful. However, currently I don't want to use face sets. So how do we deal with this color thing going on here? Very easily, you go to face sets, come down to face set from visible, and now you'll have the, the same colors set up. Okay, over here, I actually don't want this to have random colors. So I'm going to go to here, go to material. I'm going to go to matte cap, select a matte cap, that matte cap, which I like. Okay, so here we are in here. Something else that will help us is allow us being us having the ability to, uh, I'm going to shrink this window some. See, there's the two arrows. You can still see everything. It's smaller now. I want my view, so we have this. Uh, something else that I want is I want statistics, all right? So is it here? It's I believe it's here, there we go. So see the two circles, the arrow next to it? Come down, select statistics. Okay, so why do you want to see the statistics? Uh, it's very important to your sculpt. Basically, when you have lower polygons, It's you can move things more. However, your tools will act, I would say, drastically different depending on how many polygons you have. Uh, so what I want is I want this to go up to 10,000 polygons, right? So one of the ways you can do that is press the R key. See that grid there has the number. I don't typically use the numbers. I look at the size of the grids. I move my mouse. I see the grids getting smaller. I left click and then I hold control, press R. And now we can see the statistics change. It's too much. I want about 10,000. So I make I go the opposite direction. Hold Control, press R. 11,000 I am fine with, right? Uh, what I want is this to be slightly flatter here. So I'm going to go to our Scrape tool. Press F. And then right above the eyebrows, I'm flattening that out some. Not too much, right? Here, I want this cheek area to be flattened out. So um, I'm going to make this bigger. Press F. By pressing F, you can make your tool bigger that you're working with. And I can look here. Even though, see how I'm, I'm like, I can be at an angle here, but I can go here and look. This is too much of a point here. I'm going to hold Shift. When you hold Shift in sculpt mode, uh, that point is going to annoy me. When you, okay, so what I'm doing there is I'm holding shift, right? So in, in uh, scope mode, see this thing here, smooth, very useful, all right? Even though I'm on here, whenever I hold shift, I'll switch to this tool, even though you won't see Blender showing you that it switched to this. Holding shift, and then shift is, you use shift so, I mean, you use smooth so much. When you hold shift, Blender automatically tends to change the tool you're on to this. You let go of shift, it goes back to whatever you're using. That's very important to know. Just roll the mouse wheel to, wheel to zoom out. Okay, let's go to the front view so we can see our reference. Okay, 
let's zoom into our reference. So the chin needs to be longer. So we'll go to good old elastic deform. Make sure you have your X turned on. So what you do on one side is mirror to the other side. We can easily drag this down. Don't think things have to be exact here, right? Uh, we have like the basic, these basic cheekbone setup. So that's important. See how that is. And we did this with the scrape tool. You can always press control Z to go back. Uh, if you're like trying to do that and it doesn't work, just press control Z, start over, right? I like to use the crease brush for what we're about to do now. So what we want to do, I'm going to press the F key. We're going to put a line straight through the eyes here, right? And then what we're going to do is, uh, hopefully you can see how much I use for this. Is. I'm going to hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to look here. I hold, I'm going to hold control. All right, so this is important. So this tool right here typically digs in. So when you don't uh, press anything, it digs in. When I hold control, it will do the opposite. So instead of digging in, it will push out. So what you want to do here is push out. So I'm holding control. And what you're doing here is you're going up to a little bit below the eyebrows and then across like that. Okay, this next thing I'm going to show you, you're probably going to be like, what in the world? It's kind of strange. We're going to go to clay strips. Clay strips is a very good tool for building things up. We're going to decide, I want to put a strip going right across here. I'm going to press F to slightly increase the size of my brush. So we're going to go right from the ear, right over, right underneath the eyes, like that. All right. Now we're going to come from the ear down and across the chin area, area like that. And you might sit there and say, why, why are you doing that? Okay, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, this kind of sets you up for the, the chin area, the, the basic structure of the head. I, I When I first learned that, I was like, that's kind of strange. I find that it works well. Uh, if you're thinking about, like, if you're used to watching other sculpting tutorials and you're like, why don't, you know, why are you doing this? Why don't you just, you know, sculpt? Why are you doing this strange stuff? I think when you're, like, very high in skill, uh, you can skip a lot of steps uh, myself, my skill goes up, it goes down. Sometimes I'm higher in skill, sometimes I'm lesser in skill. When I do this, basically whether I'm higher in skill or less in, in skill, it, it pretty much works. Anyway, what we're going to do is go to right view. Now, you see this right here? See where the eye is? So we want this to come down. So what we can do is go to the uh, elastic deform, and we can drag this down like that. You know, push this back some. All right, so we're going to go back to front view, right? So typically what I like to get, do is go to the blob brush, which I like. Don't use see this, use a lot in much tutorials as well. The blob brush comes out typically. I'm going to hold control, and I'm coming out basically from the corners of this eye, going diagonal down this way, all right? There we go. And basically what this is doing is it kind of like set you up for the, uh, the the cheekbones in a pretty nice way, I think. I'm going to show you a good shortcut. And what that is, is hold control, hold shift. This allows us to draw a mask. So what we want to do is go up above the eyebrows. We're coming down and we're doing this to form the nose, basically. So coming around this whole nose area like that, right? We can then go to mask, smooth mask, right? Now we're going to hold control and press I to invert. And then with that done, turn this to the side some. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, clay strips. See this here? We'll fill that in there, right? Make this come out like that. We'll look to the side. We'll go to our elastic deform brush, press F to make this bigger, getting the, a loose approximation of the nose. Back towards the front, not bad. The nose, for this part of the nose, you want to actually pull this in here. Don't get too much about it yet, but be too concerned about it yet. We're going to hold Alt, press M to get rid of that mask. And what a mask does is a mask protects would you put it over? Masks are very useful when you're sculpting. 
Once you have the basic structure of the head, uh, like even this is strange as it looks, you can kind of see, like you, you can almost like see it's like the structure helps a lot. So like we have the reference here. We haven't even looked at the reference that much. We've basically done structure things and the structure things I, I, I think we've done, like it's not like you you need to know a whole lot. Like we put a, a bar here, like a, 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 a strip here and a strip here of mesh using the uh, clay strips. And then we like dug this out with the blob brush. Like it's kind of similar, whatever metal head you're working on. So anyway, for the chin, we can do the same thing. We'll go to the blob brush and uh, we'll press uh, control like that. For this area of the mouth here, here I'm going to hold control and kind of go like that back and forth, right? You'll see why we're about to do that. It looks strange. And the reason why it, it looks strange and it's fine that it looks strange is what we're going to do is go to object mode. Remember the 3D cursor, where the 3D cursor is at is where objects tend to come in at. We're going to press shift. We're going to press A and then we're going to bring in that another UV sphere. We're going to push this down, all right? This is important. See the, the, the line here? So where you want this UV sphere at is you want it to be slightly... So here's the... I would say this is the middle of the nose here. You want this to be like where the... Slightly past the tip of the nose, right? And not too far going into the chin. So this looks pretty good right here. The re What this is, we're making a mouth, basically. Now the re Again, the, if you're looking at other sculpting tutorials, you're like, why are you doing this? Uh, for lack of a better word, uh, I'm trying to say it the right way. As far as scale, it's easier to work with this mouth as a separately because you can move it back and forth. Uh, typically, depending on how much I'm sculpting, right? Depending on how much I'm sculpting, uh, if I'm sculpting a lot, I can skip this step. When I am not sculpting a lot, uh, sometimes I might have to do something where I'm, I'm rigging or I'm doing special effects or something like that. It takes time away, you know, you, you get into that and like what you're currently doing, you'll start to like, you'll start to lose, you know, like some skill if you're not doing it. So anyway, this tends to work very well. Like having them out, the lips, so basically what happens is sometimes I'll form the lips, right? The lips will be too far forward. And then I have to go through all this work trying to get them to go back to the head or they'll be too far back. Most of the time they're too far forward. Long, story short, put, putting them on a UV sphere, you can just form the lips, move them where you need to be. It just makes things easier. Anyway, we're going to go to right view. We're going to push this up. When you push this up, you're pushing it. See this line right here? See what our lips are. So like this top lip, you want to push this up so it's like going along that top lip, right? Don't be too concerned about this matching up the lips as far as right here because remember, this is a separate sphere, which means we can drag this forward or back as we need to. I'm going to hold them in a the mouse button to rotate back towards the front. So we're going to select the head. We're going to go back to scope mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to that blob brush. We're going to press F to shrink the size of our our uh, brush. And we're going to give the mouth some room here. Like that. We're also going to go from right from the ear and aim towards the mouth. Like this. All right. Okay, so let's go to the front so we can see our reference. If you can't see the reference enough, remember you can change the op opacity for the reference. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to hold shift. We're going to tap, not drag. If you drag here while holding shift, remember shift activates the smooth. If you drag, it's going to be too strong typically, right? So we're slightly, you know, smoothing that out. You know, I'll show you why it's it's not that big of a deal. Don't get crazy here I'll, I'll, as far as smoothing. You know, I'll show you why, or you'll see why. All right, so let's go towards his mouth. Mouth. So we're going to go out of here, go to object mode, select here. Go to scope mode. As far as switching back and forth, typically I'm switching back and forth. Like once we're in here, maybe we'll use that. Remember, Alt-Q will switch from here right to that when you're hovered over an object. This is important here. So we are in the object of the, the cube, the uh, UV sphere. I'm going to go to here. When I right click, select shades, move, come back to scope mode. Sometimes you'll see me do things in, in Blender. The reason why I'm doing them is Blender changes. Typically it changes for the better. 
often uh, for that you know it gets much better however there's things i've used that i've been using blender for years now some things i'll i'll do like automatically like uh if i uh, sometimes i'll my brain will work and it'll forget that i can go between here and here so if you're like wondering like why is he doing that sometimes it's just automatic years of being in blender anyway uh, this is important here see this is 512 that's not enough we're going to take this up to about 5,000, maybe even 10, probably 10,000, right? So we're going to press the R key. Look at the squares, right? Hold control, press R. That's 8,000. I'm going to press R, go up slightly more. Control R. That's good. Okay, lips tend to take a decent amount of geometry. Let's go to front view. We're going to go to our crease tool. I find that this works very well. Uh, Draw sharp works well as well. Draw sharp tends to work well. I like the crease tool the best. So what we're doing is we're going right to this lip and we are, oh, see this right here? We need to turn this on. So let's hit uh, Control Z, Control Z, turn that on. And then right here, we're putting that center line remember I told you my lips will like they'll be like pushed forward or back or too far out T typically comes from like doing things like this so because we have it its own separate UV sphere we can move it forward and back so what you want to do now is you're going to hold control go for the side of the lip and then go up and over like that right for this right here see that line there you're gonna hold control right there bring that out like that Okay, and then for this here, you're going to hold control again, and you're going to go here. You don't want this line to be too hard. Just going like that. Okay, I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. I'm going to hover over here. I'm going to hold Alt and press Q. That let me switch to this object, uh, which is the main head part. I'm going to go to the right view. I'm going to hold Shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. I'm then going to press B for box select. I'm going to aim right behind the ear pull this back so I have a mask here I'm gonna to go to mask select smooth mask the reason why I selected smooth mask is I don't want I'm gonna pull the geometry here we did this so we can pull this geometry here right that's why I put the smooth mask on there so that this line uh, isn't too distorted we're gonna hold control press I so we inverted the mask and now this is protected and this isn't we're gonna to go to the elastic deform brush I'm gonna press I'm gonna zoom back first I'm gonna press F then grow the brush bigger than the head and then with the elastic deform brush, I'm going to pull this geometry back. I'm then going to hold Alt, then press M to uh, get rid of the mask. Okay, I'm going to press F to shrink the uh, size of the tool. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Holding Shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. Holding Control as well as the middle mouse button to pan in. Uh, the uh, geometry is 11,000. I want to we're going to angles of this nose here. So I want to increase this to about 20,000. I'm going to press R. Move to the side slightly. Hold control. Press R. 22,000. I'm good with that. Okay, I'm going to go to the crease brush. I'm going to press F to shrink the size of the brush. I'm forming the eye sockets by the... So I'm holding control. That lets me put an edge instead of digging in. The crease brush naturally digs in. When I hold control... Uh, the brush instead of pushing in pushes out which is very good for working on edges like this all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the scrape brush increase that slightly so I want to work on this angle here for the nose so I'm, I'm aiming for like the side of the nose right have that angle there so now I want to in increase this line here so I'll go to the crease brush hold control I'm letting oh, now I'm holding control again I'm gonna hold shift to smooth that out some there I'm gonna go back to the uh, scrape brush I'm gonna press F to increase the size of the brush I'm gonna flatten this out some so I'm not holding anything, I'm just, not just, I'm uh, flattening this out here. 
I'm gonna make this more round. So I'm gonna go back to the crease brush. And when I say wrap, wrap this, I'm talking about this angle here. So I'm holding Control. Now I'm holding Shift to smooth that out some. Taking a look by holding the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, there's an indentation that basically comes right up to the edge of the line, right, right to the edge of the line, edge of the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control, hold shift, this lets me automatically have a mask tool. So now I'm making the basic shape of that indentation and when I did this I was thinking of having this run into the basic like flatness of the head there. I'll go to mask and then I'll go to the smooth mask, I'll hold control, press I. And then uh, uh, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the blob brush. Do I want the blob? Yeah, I'll go for a blob brush. Push this in slightly. So I held control there. I'm going to hold shift here, kind of like blend that in. I'll hold alt then M to get rid of that mask. When I first started sculpting, I remember looking at a. Uh, people sculpt and I was like man it's so smooth it's so smooth so you look here you can see like how rough it is and the reason why I'm saying that that's what's so nice about the smooth uh, modifier so I'll click smooth modifier go to factor change this to one I'll change this to 20 nice and smooth I'll select apply all okay we're gonna hover over the mouse I'm gonna press F to shrink the size of my brush I'm gonna Hold Alt, then press Q. See that flash? So now we're on this object here. Okay, what we're going to do is pull out that top lip. So what we're going to do is hold Control, Shift, draw a mask. We're going to go to Mask, Sharpen Mask. Sharpen Mask and Smooth Mask look almost exactly the same to me. Uh, I picked Sharpen Mask because when I was practicing for this, it seemed like it worked better. They seem like they do the same thing. I don't quite understand the difference between them. Anyway, when I typically when I work, I I use the, the mask to act like uh, we got two new cats. That's what if you hear that noise, you're like, what is that noise in the background? They're having a good time there in the background. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna hold Control, press. I right so now I have this mask pushed down I'm gonna press F to bring this up I'm gonna go to the elastic brush I'm gonna drag this lip out some like that now I'm gonna hold control press I I'm gonna hold control as well as the middle mouse button holding shift as well as control the pan I'm gonna go to the inflate give this some volume I'm going to go to our reference. Okay, I'm going to hold Alt and press M to get rid of the mask. Okay, I'm going to hold Control as well as Shift. I'm going to draw a mask. The reason why I'm drawing this mask here, let me go hold Alt, press M. Let's increase the geometry. I don't like how that mask looks for that. So I'll press R, go up. Hold control, press R. 19,000 looks good to me. I'm gonna draw the mask again. That looks better to me. I'm gonna go to mask, smooth mask. I'm gonna hold control, press I. I'm going to go to the elastic deform. I'm going to drag this in like that. I'm going to hold Alt and press M to get out of that mask. Get the mask off. Okay, the reason why I did this is it's often advantageous to have your character's mouth be open for rain as well as other things. Let's go to the front view. We're going to hold Control, hold Shift, put a mask right here when the elastic the form we'll pull this down slightly here I'll shrink the size of the brush 
I'm going to hold control press I to invert. Okay, I'm going to hold Alt press M. I'm going to hold, I'm going to select the main part of the lips, like the main center part of these lips. Reason why I'm doing that is I want to make I want to pull this mouth to the side. I want to I don't want these lips to get squished, right? So I'm going to uh, go to mask, smooth mask. So I want to I'll show you why. So the reference I want to pull this out to the side. So if we go to the right, see how this is the back of our mouth right here. Now granted, this is forward some. Uh, however, so I, I have this protecting the, the the lips so that they're not smushed, basically, right? So I'm actually going to smooth this mask again. So now I'm going to increase the size of my brush. I have elastic deform on. I'm going to drag this to the side to make this wider, the mouth. Now I'm going to go to the right view. Press F to shrink this down. I'm going to pull this back some like that. Now I'm going to go look from uh, this view. Press F. I'm going to pull this actually up some so it's not too rounded then I'll hold alt press M to get rid of the mask okay so when you do something like this you want to be careful about having like sharp edges here so before remeshing let's uh, sharpen up the lip sum so I'm on the crease so I'm sharpening this edge up here Sharpening the edge up there somewhat. I'm going to go to Add Modifier, Smooth. The factor, I'll change this to 1. I'll change this to 20. Let's change it to 10. It's better at 10. We'll apply that. need a glob of fat right here so we're going to go to our clay strips got to be careful here there we go we'll go to uh, scrape flatten it down some Then for here, here being the inside of the mouth, um, I'm trying to put a, a line inside of the mouth. To see better, we can go to view global slash local. Let's take the geometry up, try to double it. Too much, I'll do control Z. There we go, about 40,000. I'll go to the blob brush. Hold shift. Be careful about uh, setting yourself up for weird geometry later on. And the way you can be careful is make sure there's not like columns, if that makes sense. like. There's almost like columns uh, inside of here. Like when you smooth, sometimes you'll see them. So I'm smooth, I'm pushing, what I'm doing here is I'm holding control, pushing in, right? And then I'm smoothing, all right? Uh, we'll go back to our regular view. Let's go to the right view. Remember I told you it's nice to have this be separate. Because of this, a lot of times the lips can get out of control. However, when you have this separate, you can just go, the lips are too far forward, pull back. It's really not an issue. Very nice being able to do this. Go to our front view. Go back to scope mode. Go 
back to our crease brush. Press F to increase this. I'm holding control. And I'm, I'm using the sharpness to kind of like actually move the uh, geometry. Add some flesh here with the inflate brush. Doesn't look like it has enough like flesh, if that makes sense to you. We can go in with the uh, scrape brush, flatten that out some on the edges there. Be careful. I'm going to do a control R to remesh this. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. Okay, I'm going to hold control, hold shift to put a mask around the lips. I'm doing this so I can hold control, press I. I'll do mask smooth mask what I'm going to do is uh, decrease the size of the uh, the internal part there just by using the inflate brush I'll hold alt then press M let's go to the right view see how much we came out decent amount and also see this bottom lip is trying to come forward again I'll go control shift Select this, mask, mask smooth, control I. Actually, control I, better to pull out than push in. That's what I said before, and I do believe it. So we'll pull that forward some. We'll go to, we'll go to Alt-M, take the mask off, go to object mode. Pull that back some yet again. Front view. Take a look. Let's add a smooth modifier. Change this factor to 1. Change this to 10. We'll apply that. Okay, I'm going to hover over this. Well, I'll just select it since we're in object mode. We'll go to scope mode. I'm going to press R, control R, and increase the geometry. I'm going to take this up being 800,000. Too much. Control Z. Bring it back down. Control R. There we go. I did that because uh, I want there to be enough geometry for the. Uh, the mouth right so i'm going to go to object mode select the mouth hold shift while holding shift select the head let go of shift hold control press j i join the mouth to the head so i'm going to go to scope mode this has a different color because it blended at an automatic face set so we'll go to face sets make a face set from visible so now we have them both you know being the same face set we'll press f to shrink this down Okay, this is, this piece is, this is its own separate piece from this. So the, to fix that, we'll hold Control, press R. So now this is joined to the face. So we can come in, hold Shift. And I'm not dragging, I'm left clicking. Go to the front view, take a look. Okay, so for our face, what we're going to do is let's, uh, I'm going to grab brush here because I want there to be a pretty strong pull here. Uh, here, I'm going to go to the crease brush. I'm coming 
up and around like this for the, the nostril. Here I'm not holding control. Holding control here, um, in a sense I'm over. Holding control here, by the way, too. I want to overdo the sharpness on these things because we're going to use a smooth. So I'm smoothing here. Smoothing here. I'll not, I'm sorry, sharpening, not smoothing. Sharpening. Go back to our reference. This should be more narrow here. Those should come out more there. Go to the right view. That there. So I'm dragging these things out to make them look to ma match up more with the reference. You can see the angle of the eye, how it should be there. So I'll hold control, make this like sharp point here. So the eye. I'm holding control here. Making that sharp, and I'm making them overly sharp. We'll put a smooth modifier on this. The lips look like they could use some more flesh. Using inflate for that. This here will hold smooth. The nostrils, uh, I like to use the blob brush for this. Okay, for the forehead, we need some flesh here. So flesh, nice thing for flesh is a clay strip. So we'll put some flesh here. Have that flesh kind of go up like that. I'm holding shift to smooth this flesh kind of out. Uh, there's flesh that comes down from here. It goes out here around to like that. So we'll add this flesh in here like this. My other cat making herself heard. So I'm smoothing this out manually. I'm not dragging, I'm holding shift. Okay, let's go to our reference. So you kind of can use like your knowledge of the face of you're used to drawing. If you're not used to drawing, I, re I recommend you to draw you don't have to draw but it definitely helps so this lip is too far up the things like this I find like this like I said like there's like muscle fat as well uh, if you don't put those things in I find that uh even though you barely see them when you smooth, there's like a subtle thing. Like this thing right here, you, this thing, you see it. Like if you look at people's faces, you won't see it too much. But if you look at an angle, like you'll see that this little piece there. So I think like subconsciously, like if it's not there, it doesn't look right. The face looks off and you're like, why is that face look off? Well, I don't know. When I say, I don't know, why am I saying I don't know? I don't know why I'm saying that. I do, I do know. I said when I when I do things like this, uh, my my skill goes it goes up and down depending on what I'm doing. And uh, I guess I'm saying that so like you do things like me, like I'll get hired to do a job, and I'll have to do it. It might be like I, I have to uh, do, do special effects. I'm like on point with special effects, but other things will fall back. Uh, I guess that makes sense, you know. So. Uh, this video here, one of the reasons I'm making this, I'm making this for YouTube and people to watch on YouTube. However, I tend to make videos for myself as well, uh, so that when I forget, like I have the newest things I learned, I can go back and look at my own videos. So, all right. So with this face, uh, let's. 
dig in here. Shift for that. We're going to add a smooth modifier. First one. Take this to 20. Take it to 28. We'll apply that. And let's do some work on these ears. Uh, I'm going to hover here, hold Alt, press Q to go to the ear. We have all this stuff on the ear. I'm actually going to apply all for that. Go back to scope mode. Oh, go back to object mode. There's a warning at the bottom. A whole control, press A. Uh, typically the war warning is like, uh, basically this fixes the warming. So you go to control A, all transforms. So now when I go back in the scope mode, uh, things are fixed. Okay, we're gonna press R, increase the geometry a decent amount. 24,000 is good. The way I learned to work on the ear, and it's an easy way to remember things, is the, uh, we'll go to view global slash local, is the, the uh, Y, I mean the question mark, the Y and the bump. So I'm gonna to go to the blob brush first. I'm gonna use this to push in the ear somewhat. All right, so the question mark is, this is the question mark like this. So here's the question mark part, then it kind of comes in like that. All right, for the ear. And then uh, the Y part is here. Kind of like a thick Y. It kind of curves around. It's separate from here. So the Y is inside of here, kind of like separate from this. We'll go to the crease brush to make this harder. And we can see like in there how things are going. We can see it. Letting go. So I'm digging in here. It's going to be able to dig in here. I'll use this blob brush. Same thing here. I'll increase that here like that. We'll add a smooth modifier to this. Actually, let's go back out of here. Add a smooth modifier. One. Try. Whoops. Try 10. Not bad. We'll apply that. Okay, we'll hold the middle mouse button, look at the back of the ear. We'll select the scrape brush. We'll flatten this out some. We do want there to be enough flesh to hook up with the head once we bring this in. My other cat is making sorrowful noises, if you hear that. That's what that is. Cat's trying to be in the video. Okay, I'm gonna hold shift as well as the minimum mouse button pan. I'm gonna hover over the face, hold alt, then press Q. To switch to the face, I'm gonna hold control, hold shift, draw a mask over the upper lip. I'll zoom in. Uh, hold the middle mouse button as well as the shift button the pan. I'm going to go to mask, smooth mask. Okay, what I'm going to do, there's like a kind of like a trapezoid shape underneath the lips. I'm going to go to the scrape brush. 
So basically what I'm doing here when I see that trapezoid shape, so this would be like the line going across, this would be the trapezoid would come down and go across like this. So I'm flattening out the uh, side of the lip here. To kind of set up for that trapezoid shape. So it's kind of like uh, a whole control. So that would be here and here. That is kind of like the shape underneath the lip. And a whole control. There. Okay, I'm going to hold control, press I to invert the mask. I'm going to hold shift to flatten this out. So I'm, I'm going to go to the blob brush. I'm going to press F to shrink my brush. Hold control so the blob brush pushes in. Bring this down like this. I'm then going to go to the crease brush. Kind of heart and then uh harden that upper lip like that go to the elastic deform push this down slightly like that when I hold up press M to take away that mask okay I'm gonna hold them in the mouse button I'm gonna hold control as well as shift to draw another mask right in between the lips I'm going to go to mask and then select sharpen mask. I'm going to hold control, press I to invert the mask. I'm now going to the elastic deform. Push this in like this. I'm going to hold alt, press M to take off the mask. Now I'm going to draw the mask kind of what I did before, except I'm given myself some room to uh, move the geometry of this inside part of the mouth. The reason why I'm doing this is so uh, this gives the ability of working with teeth. I'm going to hold control press I uh, later on. So I'm going to go to the blob brush. Hold control Push that down, push that up there. Okay, I'm going to hold Alt, press M. So I'm trying to do is not have, see how this piece came out? I don't want that really coming out like that. It can cause issues, so I'm trying to smooth that. So I'm holding Shift, by the way. Holding control. So with the mouth open like that, I'm going to hold control press R to do a remesh. We can uh, work with this more later on with the mouth uh, being open like that. Okay, I'm going to Press F, hold controls was middle mouse button, put my cursor inside the mouse, mouth. I'm going to hold shift, press A. This gives me an expanding mask. I'm going to left click, hold control, press I to invert. And then I'm going to go to the grab brush. I'm trying to make this hole more dramatic. So grabbing and I'm pulling. Probably difficult to see. I'm Basically trying to make this bigger. Things start getting out of control. I'll hold shift to smooth. Okay, I'm gonna hold control press I, right? The reason why I wanna do this is I wanna shut the mouth some, not too much, so that uh if I remesh it the mouth totally closes. I kind of like how that is. I'm going to hold Alt, press M to get rid of the mask. I'm 
I go to the elastic to form. Pull down the edge of the mouth, mouth slightly. I'm going to go to the right reference point. Adjust in the mouth somewhat according to the reference. If you want to be very careful, you can put a mask on here to control what moves and what doesn't. I am not doing that right now because I realize we'll probably have to come back. This brow here making this match up with the reference more. Uh, for the nose, I'm going to push this in here more. For that. I'm going to shrink my brush, pull this out to the side more here you don't want that but here kind of I'm gonna go to the draw sharp to kind of outline the nostril more there I'm gonna go to the the uh, blood brush hold control it's kind of good I, I find that to go forward and back rather than making a circle as far as making the Holes for your nostrils. Let's go to the clay strips brush. This point here. We'll go to draw a sharp. Kind of Form this tip of the nose slightly more. Again, we'll adjust this. So if you're like, oh, it looks kind of strange again, it's like, well, all right, most likely put a smooth on here. Uh, smooth it down. Okay, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate. I'm going to go to the upper part of the screen, go to object mode. I'm going to go to the right view. I'm going to go right to the center of the eye that I can see from the reference. I'm going to hold shift, right click, put the 3D cursor right there. We put the 3D cursor right here because where the 3D cursor is at in Blender is where objects tend to come in the Blender at. We're going to hold shift, press A. We're going to bring in a UV sphere, press S to shrink the UV sphere. You can see it came in right to where the uh, cursor is at. When you bring in this UV sphere, it's important to remember that the uh, head is basically five eyeballs apart. So there should be uh, a, a, enough space for there to be enough room for there to be a space in between the eyeball. For the, us to work with this more easily, we're going to add a mirror modifier. We'll select the throat. So now we have two eyeballs. See the distance here, how there's too much diff distance, so we'll make the eyes bigger. Push them slightly together and just imagine there being another eyeball here. There should also be an eyeball basically uh, from here to the side of the head. That should help you as far as you know, working with the size of your eyeballs. You can adjust them, you know, accordingly to what seems right. But that's the general thing that I try to go by, uh, five eyeballs ahead. Uh, yeah, five eyeballs going across for the head. So we're going to go to right view. Here's eyeball here. We'll pull this back like this. When you pull this back, by the way, you be careful where you're at. Look here as well as here uh, as far as adjusting your eyes. Okay, we're going to click on the head. We're going to go to scope mode. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go, well, actually, we're going to see where the eyebrows are at, right? So this looks too low. So we're going to go to the elastic deform brush, move this whole area up like that. Now we're going to hold control, hold shift. We're drawing a mask 
around like where the eye socket area pretty much is. We'll select the mask eh, smooth this time. And we're going to hold control press I to invert that mask. And then with that mask inverted, what we're going to do is go to the clay strips brush. Basically, probably too big. Fill in the area of the eye, which we already did. I'm going to hold shift to smooth this out some, particularly here. So now what we're going to do is go to draw sharp, right? See the reference? So from here to here is pretty much where we want to draw. Well, we use that to start. Draw sharp does a pretty good job at uh, giving you decent eyeballs. You want to do more curve on the top than on the bottom. So we'll hold Alt M to get the mask off of there. Okay, this part of the eye should kind of look like an eagle. So like imagine this was the side of an eagle's head, right? Like this was the whole part of its head. The beak was right here. That's kind of like what I think about when I'm doing like an eye. So you kind of want to draw out, drag out like this piece right here. For here, what we can do is we'll take the blob brush. Make that area thicker there. Area thicker here. Then we'll go to the crease brush and we'll make a hard edge. So the thing of it is like you're making like planes uh, right on the eyelids. Okay, I'm gonna draw a mask here. Go to mask, smooth mask. You can adjust the shape of this upper eye. I'm gonna hold Alt, press M. Adjust that slightly. Okay, I'm gonna hold Control, hold Shift, draw a mask all around here. Go to mask, mask move. Have the elastic deformer, brush on. I'm gonna press F. Drag this down here like this. Press F. Push this up some there. Alt. M, get rid of the mask. Okay, what I'm going to do now is go to the reference. Mouth needs to be up some like that. The mouth is not wide enough. Drag the mouth over like that. Um, Shut the mouth some. Go like this. Kind of flatten this out. I'm holding shift to smooth that out. That's good. That opened the mouth up some. I'll go to back to go to the crease brush here. Kind of there. Add some fleshiness to this. So I'm going to take the blob brush. There's muscles that come around like this, right? Uh, I'm going to increase brush, and I'm so I'm going over here. I'm also now flattening this. I go over this part of the eye here. So I'm holding shift to smooth this out.
Okay, we're going to zoom back. We're going to smooth this out some. Um, my daughter, Eliana, who's a 3D artist as well, she gave me some advice yesterday. So we're going to implement some of that. Uh, I'm going to hold control, hold shift to draw a mask. Around the eyelid here. The, as well as the eye. And then what I'm going to do, uh, let's see. The hand and drag this down. Okay, I, I think that's good. I'm going to press F. I'm going to hold shift. The most of the time when I hold shift, I click. I'm actually dragging here because I want to do some serious smoothing. This has some mask on it. So I'm going to hold Alt, press M to take off the mask. I do you think that looks much better? Trying to be careful near the eye. Looking here. Let's move this out. Um, brush F to make my brush bigger. Now I'm going to click, I don't want too much here. I'm clicking, holding the shift button to make this smoother. I'm going to hold shift here, smooth this out more. So I'm actually left clicking and dragging here. You can see the results there. Bottom part of this lip. I'm left clicking and dragging so I don't overdo this. Gonna hold shift here. Hold control as well as shift to put a mask here. I'm going to go to the scrape brush. Flatten this out some. You can hold shift as well. Oh, smooth is actually working more effectively, I think, than the Great brush was it's kind of interesting. I would shift here. I'm gonna hold Alt M to take off that mask. Left clicking here. So manually smoothing. Very careful around the eyes. I'm going to go to the crease brush. I do want to put this crease somewhat back in there. Let's move this. Go to the right view. Go to our elastic deform.
Okay, on the side we can see we have the eye too far forward, so we're going to go to object mode, select the eye. Look at the tip here, we want to bring it back to about there, straight back, about here. So what we'll do here is we'll, we need to draw some uh, flesh pet part back, some of this part, so what we'll do is we'll put a mask around the eye part that we want to aim to work on. Up, let's wait a second. There we go. So we're doing this so that we can target the eye and then work without being concerned too much about uh, changing our other work. We'll go to mask, mask smooth. More of this eye here. Mask, mask smooth. We'll hold control, press I to invert. So I'm going to turn back this way, go to right view, go to the hand to pan. Okay, I realize we need less mask here, so what I'll do is I'll hold control, press I. Hold control, press shift to select this area here. And then I'll do a uh, mask, mask move again, control I, go back to right view. Put all that done, we have our elastic brush on, we'll press F, get a decent size on this, drag this back. Kind of see what's going on from here. We'll hold Alt M to take the mask off. We'll press F to shrink this down. Take a look. Hold Shift. I'm actually left clicking and dragging. I think that change made things look much better. Looks very good. I'm going to go to object mode. Select the eye. Right click. Select shade smooth. Select the head. Come back to scope mode. Add zoom in. I'm gonna hold control, hold shift. Select here. I'm doing this because uh I'm gonna hold control press I. I think that this should be flattened out more. I'm going to hold Alt, press M. Left clicking right there. I'm going to hold the mouse button to rotate. I'm actually dragging here, left clicking and dragging here. I'm dragging here, I'm looking over here though, holding shift. We're going to zoom in here with the hand, the pan. I go right to this corner. Drag that over some like that. 
Okay, we're gonna hold control, hold shift, we'll draw a mask around the eye. We'll go to mask, smooth mask. We'll go up like this, we make sure we have the elastic deform on. This is kind of thick, so I'm dragging this in. Shrink my brush. that we're going to hold alt press m go to this right view here see the cheek here we're going to grab here drag that back we're going to go here drag this back holding the middle mouse button to rotate i'm going to press f to shrink the size of my brush Okay, I want to flatten the chin out some. So what I'm going to do is press M, very close to the bottom, like that. I'll go to mask, mask move, control I to invert the mask. I'm on the uh, elastic deform, drag that up like that. I'll pr hold Alt, press M to take away the mask, and I'll hold Shift to flatten that out. looks good to me okay what we're going to do now is we're going to go to edit mode we're going to go to lasso select so we selected the arrow we held we went to lasso select we're going to zoom in and what we're doing here is we're selecting areas that we want to remain sharp so um, i am left clicking and dragging over the eye i'm about to select this area i'm going to hold shift have to hold shift so I don't lose the selection. So I'm holding shift here. So I have that eye. Holding shift to select the nose. Looks like I got the whole nose. I didn't because there's internal parts of the nose. So I had to, I had to tilt the screen and look up. I'm holding shift again. I'm letting go of shift so I can rotate the camera. Holding shift again. So now with that done, I'm going to go to this green icon. Select plus to make a new group. I need to associate what I've selected with this group. That is not done simply by clicking the plus button. There's a group made that does not have this associated with it yet. To associate this with this group, I have to click assign. So now Blender knows that this, this what you see highlighted is associated with that. So I'm gonna left click to deselect. I'm gonna to go to object mode. Okay, so here in object mode, I'm gonna to go to the wrench which is our modifier tab. I'm going to add a smooth modifier. I'm going to change the factor to one. I'm going to change the repeat to 80. Looks horrible. I'm going to go to vertex. This is the group we just made. I'm going to select the group. So basically what's happening is the smooth, this is being applied just to what we had selected. We want the opposite of that, all right? We want to keep what we had selected B sharp. So what we do is we want to select everything other than what we had selected in that group. We can do this by clicking these two arrows here. And there is our result there. If I click the monitor, you can see the previous, what things look like before this move. Here's what they look like with this move. I like this, so I'm going to select Apply. OK, what we're going to do now is select the ear. Go to Edit Mode. We're going to uh, hover over this ear. Press L to select the ear. L lets you select typically an object like so. They're not connected. Uh, they're one single object, but there's two separate objects, right? So when you hover over uh, technically what is in object, it means like you're in the data of the object. Uh, you can just hover over an object, press L, and you'll select that. So anyway, with that done, I'm going to press X. Choose vertices to delete that object. I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to with this ear here. This ear, the origin point is right here. I want to rotate this ear, right? The origin point's right here, though, so it's going to make things strange. So to fix that, what I can do is I can go to Object, Set Origin, and then I want to choose Origin to Geometry. So now the origin point is there. Okay, the important thing about the origin point being there is, see how this ear is not like rotated almost at all? So now what I can do is I can pull this ear back, and press R to rotate like this. You can look here to see how it's like going. R to rotate on the z-axis like that.
I go to front view. I'm going to press R to rotate slightly that way. Push in slightly this way. Okay, for the, the ear, I'm actually going to, to add modifier smooth for that. Try a 10 on here. I'm looking here. Yeah, maybe a 5. I think a 5. I'm going to apply that. With that done, I'll hold shift, select the head, hold control, press J. Now this is one with the head. I'll go to scope mode, go to face sets, select face set from visible. Okay, we're going to zoom back. We want to copy this ear to the other side. This is negative X. This is positive X, right? The reason why I'm saying that is if to copy this, we're going to use some metric size, right? I'm holding the middle mouse button. When you hold the middle mouse button, this allows you to, to slide this panel here. If you don't see the X, Y, Z options, you're going to go down to click the, the arrow, go down. So negative X is uh, the side without the ear. And it's basically saying, which, like this direction is saying, we want to copy the negative X, the, size without, the side without the ear to positive X. So basically, if we click symmetricize with this setting, we'll have no ears. So what we want to do is click here, go to positive X to negative X, and that's me, the positive X is on the right-hand side. We'll copy that to the left-hand side. So we'll click symmetricize. So there we go. Okay, with that done, we'll zoom in. I'm going to press F to shrink the size of my brush. I'm going to hold shift. I'm not dragging. I am clicking because I don't want too much of a smooth effect. So by holding shift, my brush automatically goes to the smooth brush, even though it doesn't say it's going to the smooth brush. It is. So I'm still holding shift, smoothing out some of what I can see right here, basically. Clicking, not clicking and dragging. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to go to the upper part of the screen. Slid this to the side so I could see this here. I did that by holding the middle mouse button. I'm going to go to object mode. Uh, okay, we have the 3D cursor there. That's not bad. I'm going to move this up slightly. I'm holding shift. I'm going to right click, right? Did that to put the 3D cursor here. I put the 3D cursor there because where objects, where the 3D cursor is at is where objects tend to come into Blender at. So I'm going to hold shift, press A. I'm going to go to curve. And then I'm going to go to Belzier curve. All right, so we have the Belzier curve right here. Okay, so I clicked, I went to this square, I went down to this viewport display and I clicked in front. I did that so we could see the Belzier curve through the other, the rest of the mesh. Okay, so with this Belzier curve, I'm gonna Okay, I have it clicked. I'm going to press S to shrink it down. Basically, we're making eyelashes. Nothing too, you know, extreme. Since we have a male character here. Uh, however, we are making eyelashes. That's the plan anyway. So I, what I did is I just rotated this up, thinking about the rotation of like the, the eye, basically. I'm going to edit mode now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click here. I clicked here. I'm going to press R to rotate. I did that because I want basically like the this here all right so we have this Belzier curve what we want to do is we want thickness to it so we go to the Belzier curve option here we scroll down we want to look to I'm gonna drag this out Nope, don't want that that's what I want all right so we have geometry we click the arrow for geometry you want to look for bevel and then depth we'll take the depth up all right so we have that there. Oops. Eh. We'll try that. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to select everything. We're going to press S to scale this down. Go here. Push this down like this. 
Uh, we're going to turn on this magnet, which is snapping. We're going to go to options right next to it. Click that. We're going to go to face project. We're going to turn on all these whoops, options here. We'll click here. Press G. That'll stick. Click here. Press G. That'll stick. Okay, I'm going to rotate. You can see this is basically sticking to, for the most part, where we want it to go. We're going to click here we're going to turn off that in front so we can see it's it's not quite how we want it to be okay what I'm going to do is turn off snapping I'm going to press A to select everything push that slightly forward this will push that forward like that Click here, push this forward like that, this here, drag that back slightly, okay. Mm. Not clicking thinking actually um, I, I did click I didn't move anything now okay I'm gonna go to the upper part of the screen go to object mode I'm gonna go to the wrench it's our modifier tab I'm gonna go to mirror modifier select the eyedropper select the neck then we're gonna left click left click on nothingness to deselect okay we're gonna do now is select this mesh we're gonna go to Scope mode. I'll zoom back. Okay, we're going to start making up hair. Uh, or more hair. I guess we made some for the, eye, the uh, eyelashes right there. Uh, we're going to make eyebrows now. That's the plan. So we're going to hold control, hold shift. Oops. Control Z. What's going on here? There we go. Don't particularly like that, so I'm going to do Control Z. Okay, here's the mask brush. If you want to start like right, slightly beyond the the uh, where the eye is at, come over to about this crease here. I want this for the most part to be straight. light curve here like that <clears throat> alright so now that we have that what we're going to do is we're going to go to mask mass extract we don't want this uh, extract a solid we're going to select OK For this we're going to go to edit mode to see how much geometry we're working with. We're going to go to scope mode now. We just went to edit mode just to see the dots basically. Uh, we're going to go click on this green uh, triangle here. Go to remesh. Go to quad. Select quadrant flow remesh. Here we'll select, we'll try, let's try 100. And this, uh, we're basically trying to set up how much detail we want here. So we'll try this out. If it doesn't work how we want it to, we'll undo it. Okay, so we have, it's hard to see what we have, so we'll click this square, go to the in front. Let's go to edit mode. Actually, that's pretty good. 100 worked out well. Uh, we'll go back to scope mode. Okay, what we want to do now is we're going to go to the wrench. We're going to add a solidify modifier. And then underneath this, we want a subdivision surface modifier. The order is important. You want the subdivision surface modifier underneath of here. We'll take the thickness up. 
like that. Uh, for here, what you want to do is unclick this edge data. Or not unclick, click the arrow next to edge data. Okay, in this edge data, this allows you to basically make this uh, harder, right? That's why I told you the order was important. So if we look at this edge right here, actually let me go to object mode, right click this, select shade smooth. Hopefully that'll make it easier for you to see what's going on. You can see like as we work with these settings, this gets, the edges get harder. Okay, uh, so I basically like how those edges look there. Okay, I'm going to go into scope mode for the eyebrows. I'm going to go down to box trim. I don't like how this is rounded so much, so I'm going to drag over to uh, make that less rounded. Let's see if we can. Yeah, that's neat. We can change the length with the elastic to form. Okay, I'm going to go back to object mode, turn to the side. We still have the in front on, so we'll go to the square. Turn off in front. Slightly push the eyebrows to the front like that. Deselect them. Okay, we're going to click on our main mesh, go to scope mode. Select right. We're going to hold control, hold shift to draw a... Uh, Lasso select this here. So now we'll come up here. We'll try to match up with what we already have there like that. Look at this from the front. We'll go to mask and then sharpen mask. I'll look at this from the side. Eh. I'll press B for box select, select right here. Good. Okay, so with this selected, we have our basic hair set up. We're going to go to very similar to what we did before, mask. And then we're going to go to mass extract. We're going to turn off extract to solid, select OK. Okay, we're going to go to edit mode, take a look, go to scope mode, go to the green button, go to quad, quadraflow remesh, go to where we see number of faces 4000, 4000 is good, we'll select OK, so we'll go to edit mode, we're going to edit mode just to see the squares, just the fastest way to see the squares, that looks good to me, we'll come back to object mode, We'll go to our wrench, which is our, we have our modifiers. We'll go to solidify. We're going to take the thickness of this solidify the backwards way. So you actually want it going negative. A little less thick. Thinking right there. Looks good. We'll add a subdivision surface. The order is important. You want that solidify on there first. Okay, with this on, I will make this thicker. You want to go to the edge data, adjust this to make the edges harder. And adjust them. Accordingly, I like how that looks when I select apply all. This split that's in here, don't let that get to you. Most likely, that'll be covered up. If we want to cover it up, it's pretty easy for us to fix that. So don't let it don't let it get to you. Okay, this line is actually so easy to deal with. We will deal with this now. So we'll go to scope mode. We'll go to the inflate brush, we're inflating right along the 
the center line here rotating inflating to make sure that the mesh is pushed against itself we'll hold control R that remeshed it now we'll hold shift and go down this middle line again and uh, now we can see that's taken care of now okay we're going to go to object mode we're going to go to right view we're going to hold shift and then right click right here right where the, the hair starts right we're going to hold shift press a we're going to go to curve Beldier curve the curve is leaning to the side so we're going to press R to rotate on the Y axis, 9-0. I want this, see how this is bulging that way? I want it to come the other way. So I'm going to press R to rotate on the Z axis, one eight zero. That flipped that, right? I'm going to move this up. And when I move this up, what's important is I, I move this up right to the bottom of this. It's pretty much on that 3D cursor. Right now, the origin point is here. I want this curve to be able to, to grow. Like if I scale it, I want it to look like it's growing from here. This origin point being here makes that difficult. So we want to put the origin point right there. The way we can do this is we can go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Now, the, the important thing is not just that the origin point was to, to the 3D Cursor. The 3D Cursor is right on the edge of this. That's what's important. We use the 3D cursor to aim the origin point to be on the edge of this. Suppose the 3D cursor was over here. We put origin point to 3D cursor. That wouldn't have given us what we wanted. We want the 3D cursor to be right on the edge of this. So the, it doesn't matter where the 3D cursor is at now. Now that the, uh, see, I'll show you if I hold shift and then R, this is here. But see the origin point is pretty much right there. That's what we wanted. Okay, what we want to do now is we're going to click on the uh, curve button here. We're going to look for geometry. Okay, so you might see this geometry. It might be like this. So you won't see the options. So make sure you click the arrow. You want to go to uh, bevel, right? See this depth? You're going to increase this depth, right? You increase this. You'll see like this circle. We don't want that. So what is fill mode says full. You're going to click this and select front, right? So that's what you have. Uh, remember, we put the 3D cursor here. Well, now when we press S to scale, you can see we scale down here like that. So let's scale this up. Let's make this depth thicker like that. We're going to go to a modifier. We're going to add a solidify modifier, and then we're going to add subdivision surface modifier the solidify modifier will make this thicker like that too thick actually we'll go to the subdivision surface turn this up to two uh for the see how this is kind of like has like this uh curve there what we want to do for that for the bevel is change this to profile right we want there to be a harder edge right here see how like this is kind of soft so we go to the solidify modifier settings edge and then these two tip tend to work the best with this we'll turn, turn this up turn the outer up see how now like we basically have a fairly hard edge to this right we'll lower the thickness down some like that we'll press r to rotate on the y-axis like this move this closer the like that Okay, so I like how this is square. When I said move this closer, I meant move it closer to the edge there. This, let's make this more pointy. So we'll go to uh, edit mode. We'll click here. We'll hold Alt, press S. So now we have like things coming basically to that point. Okay, so I'm going to push this down like this. Pull this over like this. So we have this here. Let's press R to rotate on the Y axis. There we go. Press R to rotate on the Z axis there. Y X. Okay. 
trying to get this to flatten out more here. There we go. That was the z-axis there. And we, sh we should be able to pull, push and pull. Just like this. All right, so we'll select this, hold shift, press D. Push that to the side, hold shift, press D. Push this to the side, hold shift, press D. Press S to scale some, shift, press D. Okay, we're gonna go to object mode, hold shift, press D. Move this to the side, press R to rotate on the Y axis like this. Bring this down here like that. Line this up with the, basically the edge of the hair there. Okay, I'm going to hold Shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan up. I have to hold the mouse button to zoom in, hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. With this selected, I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to press C for paint select, and I'm painting all of the last uh, pieces of the uh, curve here. I actually have a piece there, so I'm going to deselect, press C for paint select. So I have all the back pieces here, right? I'll hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to move this. I'm aiming these to where I want these to land on the head. So see how they're out from the head? I want these to be touching the head. I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn on this snapping tool, right? So with these here, and this is important, like your the way that things look is how they will end up. So these points of this curve will end up right as the angle is that I'm aimed towards on the head, right? As soon as I press G, so I'm going to press G. So now they're stuck to the head, which is what I wanted. Okay, the angle these are at, I do not like. So what I can do now is I can press A to select everything, right? I can roll these curves. I can rotate them in a sense. I can do that by holding control and then pressing T, right? So now I am rotating the curves, taking a look. I'll press control T again. I'm trying to pay attention to clipping. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do now is left click on nothingness to deselect, press C for paint select. I'm selecting here because I want to push these into the head. So I'm going to, oops, I right clicked. This is still on, so I turn that off. Right click is kind of like a mini undo. So I'm pushing these into the head without the snapping on. And bring them forward to them. one here I can bring forward even more yeah, I like that so far holding shift as well as the mouse button to root to a pan okay I'm going to go to object mode select here go to edit mode I'm going to left click on nothingness to deselect press C for paint select to select the hair snapping is off which is good and pull Pushing this in. It's out slightly there. Okay, I'm going to select here. Pull this in. I'll pull it in pretty deep. Hold Control, press T, which lets me rotate this. I'm going to press just R now. Here, just like this. Bring that in. Control T. Control T. Control T. This here. 
Control T that. Control T this. Push that. Trying to not have this clip. Press just R here. R here. I'm going to select here, hold alt, press S, to scale that down some, hold alt, press S, also gives us some variation between the different curves. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to, again, avoid a uh, clipping. I'm going to hold shift as well as spin a mouse button to pan. I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to select here, modifier tab. I'm going to add a mirror modifier. Uh, I'm gonna, you can see it didn't do right. So I'm going to go to the eyedropper, select the throat, see up here what's going on. Okay, I'm going to select here. I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis to flatten this out more. Push that out to the side like that. Left click to deselect. I'm going to select here. Press S to scale on the X axis like that. Back some like that. Click here, go to edit mode, select here. Hold, con hold control, press T. This does not want to, there we go. Left click to deselect. Okay, you can use the techniques that we've worked on so far to uh, Add, put more individualized hair in here. Uh, I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to select here. Okay. All right. So basically, what we're going to do here is. Uh, this here we're going to press R to rotate on the Z axis. If you hold shift you should have fine control. R to rotate on the Z axis holding shift. Okay, we're going to click here. We're going to take off the subdivision surface. We're going to click here, take off the subdivision surface. We're taking this off because when we convert this, when we convert this, this, uh, okay, these are the same. Uh, it would typically lose this to subdivision surface anyway. So when I say convert, we're going to go to object and then convert and then change that to a mesh. I believe we can right click, convert to mesh as well, right? So now what we'll do is we'll hold shift, select here, hold control, press J to join that together. Okay, now with this together, we'll add a subdivision service back on there. One brought it up pretty much to where it was before, I think. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can take this, you can, uh, uh, so basically this is mesh, right? So now we can go into scope mode. You can 
manipulate this. You can change it. You can uh, make the different sizes uh, fluctuate more, add in smaller hairs using the techniques that we use to make this hair so far. Okay, what I would like to do is show you how to texture paint this pretty quickly. Okay, what I would like to do is uh, show you how to texture paint this pretty quickly. So what we're going to do is go up to our viewing mouse at upper right, click the arrow. We're going to change this back to material, right? Uh, we're going to... Well, well, okay, with our hair clicked on, right? We're going to go to materials. We're going to select new. We're going to base color. We're going to make this be black there we go uh, we're going to click on the eyebrows click new go to the material we just made select black the eyelashes we'll click new click here select that same material to make that black okay, I'll zoom back we'll select here click new Click the arrow, select the same material to make that black as well. I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, for the face, we're going to click here. We're going to go to scope mode. I'll select the hand to pan this to the side. So then in scope mode, what we're looking for is the paintbrush. So it's the paintbrush has a little green thing like underneath the brush. You can see like multiple things look like their paintbrush. It's the one that says paint and you can tell it has like a little green uh, piece of art underneath the, the brush. So I'll select that. Okay, while you're on this brush, if you look to your your tools, right? So over to the upper right, here's our tools for the, the brush. We have all these different settings here. Uh, now I can see on the face I have a mask there. So let me hold Alt, press M to get rid of that mask. So we're going to use Vertex Paint. Vertex Paint is pretty decent. I don't know if I've ever made a tutorial showing how to use it. Typically, if you do something uh, to put colors on it, how I've always put colors on things in the past is I would have to you would have to re your your model. You would have to uh, UV unwrap it. You would have to go through all this stuff to get the basic color on it. If you were doing something besides like what we did with the hair, which was a basic material, you like one click, there's a color, right? This is this vertex painting I'm about to show you, and this is quick. I know it's some probably already a, a long video. The way I make videos is kind of hard to tell how long they're going to be. I'm sure it's, this is a, a, a pretty short. This is a very long video already. So it won't take that long. That, that's what's nice about the vertex painting. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is these two colors right here, we have this black, we have this white. I actually am not sure how to switch automatically to that white. Anyway, we'll click here. I'm going to aim for like, I live in the United States, so like the typical American dude you would see walking around, right? So... Uh, I have this one kind of flesh here, right? Uh, so I'm going to press F. And then what I can do here is... Okay, wait a second. Okay, I believe to see it... So I went to paint, we see nothing, right? So if you go to your shading tab, tab to the upper right, we click new and then what you want to do is search for i went to add okay i'm going to type in color you want to search for color where well, you want to look for a color attribute so here's a color attribute when you have this color attribute you want to click here and then select color this color is connected to what i just started painting all right now you want to click go from color to base color and now you can see our actual paint there I'm going to go back to layout. Uh, I'm going to click. Okay, there we go. Oh, 
All right, so now when I paint, you can see the paint is you know, pretty much going, it looks like almost everywhere, right? So you can see that's pretty quick, pretty fast. I'm painting underneath the hair, just guessing where that's at. Just took the middle mouse button, to, I mean, not the uh, hand to pan. Okay, so basically the, this thing we did here isn't clicking the hand to pan. I'm going to click this plus button to zoom in. This this uh, you know, didn't do too much. It gave us pretty much the same thing we would have, have had if we just did a basic material, right? However, what we can do now is I'll click here. I'll go towards like a uh, more reddish color. Then I'll go to the strength. I'll change this to point. I'll do point two. So now I'll go. Uh, okay, that doesn't look like it's strong enough. I'll change this to point five. Around like the eye area, good. The nose area, the mouth area. Be slightly more reddish. There we go. So I have this like the nose area, the mouth area, right? So then what I can do here is, uh, and this is pretty decent with the texture paint, I can go to the smudge br smear brush, right? So now I can smear this in to blend this in. There should be actually ears as well. So I'm, I'm basically painting this reddish where like blood flow, where it tends to be like a lot of blood flow. Uh, And then I'm smear. Whoops. I'm gonna smear this in. Wait a second. So yeah, that's the, the vertex paint. Just the fact that you can actually just paint is pretty pretty decent. Uh, I'm gonna go to back to the paintbrush. I'm gonna go for like a brownish, more brownish color here. Change this to 0.2. I'll go around the, the eyes here. Come along here. And here. And I'll go to the uh, smear brush, smear that in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is go back to the paintbrush. I'm going to press hover over like this here, press S to get this uh, this color. And now I'm going to use this to uh, kind of like go over. The other stuff, kind of blend it in there. Uh, and yeah, like other things, depending on how much time you take. Have varying results. Anyway, what's neat about this also is like we can, as far as the eyes, uh, you that have watched this channel for decent amount of time. Typically I would model out the eyes. Uh, a lot of times just trying to have the eyes look more like just blank than this. Uh, I would I would physically model out the eyes. However, because of vertex paint, we don't necessarily have to do that. So uh, what we're going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier, right? When we click on the eyes and we go to edit mode, we'll see like the geometry is pretty low. Vertex paint, and I didn't mention this before, it works 
pretty much on uh, you need a decent amount of geometry to have it work right uh, so that's why I put the subdivision surface on here I'm going to apply this I went to edit mode just to see like how much detail there was just a very quick way of doing that so with that done we're gonna go back to scope mode Okay, here in scope mode, I'm going to hold Alt M because there was a mask on the eyes for some reason. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our shading tab. We're going to, we can click new here or here. This is the same. I'll click new here. Uh, we'll go to add, search, color, color attribute, right? We'll put that there. Go back to our layout. We'll go to our paintbrush. I want a yeah, I want like a brownish color. Oops, not there. Darker. So what I'm going to do is zoom in, press F to shrink my brush, and then. Where I want the eye to, I'll click there once. I'm going to go to shading to connect this so we can see what I just did. Okay, it doesn't appear that I did anything yet. Uh, back to scope, oops, back to layout. Now that's why. Turn this all the way up. This I thought was pretty decent. I actually want this to be much darker. I was like, this is pretty deep, the fact that you can do this. So I do that, right? Turn up this here to be lighter. Shrink my brush just slightly. Then I'll go back to here okay what I'm going to do now is click here go to the center bring this all the way up then right over to the side here go like that I'll zoom back this looks funny here right because uh, this shouldn't this white shouldn't be like that so what we'll do is we'll Take off the mirror with this eye selected. We'll hold shift, press D, left click, push this over. So now we have that. Now left click to deselect. Oh. There we go. Okay, if you look to the upper right, this viewport shading view, uh, viewing mode is a good mode to paint in. However, if you want to get something closer to what you would actually see when you render this out you go to the rendered button and then click this arrow take off the arrow for scene world and then lower the strength down here this will give you a somewhat better lighting to to view your model with okay, as far as this neck i'm going to click the neck i'm going to go to the material tab select new go to this base color pick something yeah, I'll select a face color. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for the tutorial. For those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing. In this video, you're going to be shown how to take basic shapes and turn them into a human male head. You'll be shown how to make eyes, how to form the features of the face. You will be shown how to use curves to make things like eyelashes as well as stylized hair. Uh, as you work through this tutorial and watch the tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. So thanks for taking a look at this tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it.